Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jessica de Bartlett, and I'm going to be talking today about the results of an evaluation of a trauma-informed care initiative in, early, in uh, mental health and child welfare called the Massachusetts Child Trauma Project. And I thought I'd just briefly do some background on child trauma just so we can get regrounded. Um, which affects almost half of U.S. children, disproportionately affects very young children. Um, and we, I think there is, as common as it is, it's also common to sort of mythologize it as if um, children, you know, aren't affected by it or they always bounce back or they're resilient um, when really there's a tremendous impact of trauma, right? And I like this graphic because I know you can't read it but it sort of visualizes the full impact of all the different developmental domains that it affects, so brain development and cognition and physical health, emotions, behavioral, mental health relationships, right? Negative effects that really can go throughout childhood. And it's even more common in the child welfare system, not only through child abuse and neglect, but also, for instance, foster kids who experience multiple separations and losses and are more likely to have complex symptoms and to develop P um, PTSD. And yet, our child welfare systems really aren't prepared um, to tackle it. Uh, so often, this type of trauma is referred to as complex trauma. Um, because it begins very early in life, takes multiple forms, is severe and pervasive, and comes from the caregiving system. So imagine yourself from the child's point of view, your view of self, other, the world, when people are hurting you, who you trust for your safety. So trauma-informed care is intended to address that by really realizing the widespread impact of trauma, recognizing signs and symptoms, integrating that into um, policies and practices system-wide and creating a, environments that really resist re-traumatization for children. So in the Mass Child Trauma Project, there were three major components. On the left is uh, training for child welfare, pro welfare professionals and foster parents. On the right, training for mental health providers using three different evidence-based treatments. And in the middle, these trauma-informed leadership teams, which are multidisciplinary teams to address trauma and the evaluation. The evaluation itself is a mixed methods process and outcome evaluation. And it was really focused on not just understanding the components and their effectiveness, but how they came together in combination, how maybe they could be more than the sum of their parts, which is a real challenge in studying trauma-informed care. So we started by looking at just the effects of training, and we did find that participa participants in the Child Welfare Trauma Training Toolkit showed improvements across the board in agency policies and practices and individual practices in foster care and mental health providers, but not in child welfare. Part of the issue was tremendous turnover. There were eight PIs during the course of this uh, five-year project. We also found small but significant improvements in terms of what foster parents reported in terms of their competence of parenting, um, and they felt more able to handle difficult behavior, engage in more trauma-informed parenting, and felt just more parenting efficacy altogether. So these are our 842 children and youth who participated, um, birth to 18, who participated in trauma treatment to average nine years old and who received either uh, attachment self-regulation or competency and competency ARC, child parent psychotherapy, or TFCBT, trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. And when we asked youth how they were doing, we assessed them at baseline six months um, and discharge or additional time points if they were in treatment longer. And they reported significant re improvements across the board in every symptom cluster for PTSD. But what was interesting is that they started at a lower baseline. So they reported much worse symptoms at baseline than their parents and caregivers did. We also asked parents and caregivers because we were curious how they felt about it. And as you can see, they felt like the improvements weren't quite as great um, as their youth did. So basically, youth felt like started with more symptoms and ended up in a much better place. And parents thought they started with fewer symptoms and showed less improvement. We also asked parents about their very young children and how they were doing. And what we saw here was an uh, effects of two of the ABTs, so ARC and TFCBT, were much more profound than for child parent psychotherapy. We don't know whether that's because it was less effective, because it required them to be in treatment longer, or the measures weren't getting at what we needed to. But when we went to reductions in child behavior problems, we saw significant improvements across the board. So this was an area that parents really felt like all three trauma treatments were making a difference. 
In another part of the study, we compared um, 91,000 youth and we compared outcomes for those who were in areas where the intervention was and wasn't. And we found that children, intervention children, had a 15% less likelihood of to be maltreated and 21% more likely to be adopted within that year. And that was probably, our, in some ways, our most exciting finding because it showed the full impact. And then finally, we conducted a study which, um, through interviewing these trauma-informed leadership teams from all of these different many sectors, mental health um, and child welfare, but also alumni, foster youth, et cetera. Um, so it was quite a w wide range of participants. And they engaged in all these really interesting activities. They were allowed to choose what was best for their own communities. So some took a traditional route of training people within their systems. Other engaged in school-based initiatives or created welcome space for children and families and also initiatives for staff to combat secondary traumatic stress, so like mindfulness and yoga. But what we heard over and over again was the importance of speaking a common language. So I loved that one, one leader said it was identified very early on that the language the department speaks and the language the clinician speaks are like completely not in the same world. So that was a really important bridge. Um, and referrals to evidence-based treatments went up, but the main issue was that they wanted more buy-in from leadership at the organizational level, right? So I think ultimately what we learned is that trauma-informed care can be quite effective in child welfare and mental health, but the training system change, continuity, and collaboration were really essential components. Thank you.